Hi everyone, welcome to the advent of code 2019 in Erlang through some ad hoc unedited video where people wait for maybe some of my optimizations, but it turns out that uh, the best insights come up once the video is over. Um, today is day 20 and I've put this little tagline in here because of um, the day 19 execution that yesterday uh, I spent an extra video explaining and one of the things I've noticed as soon as I closed it is that I can check only uh, the first coordinate, then the top right coordinate and top left coordinate, and these two um, are going to be sufficient to uh, make the entire thing run in 500 milliseconds, roughly, as opposed to the uh, 10 seconds I had before. So, fun optimization, but Today is day 20, which I haven't taken the time to prepare. And uh, it should not be in code, which is kind of a good news. Although these times I kind of like in code, they're uh, pretty simple. Uh, just getting this ready before I go and read what. 20 is all about. So, uh, calendar to refresh the page because I haven't yet found the refresh button on W3M. All right, donut maze. I hope it's all about eating donuts. Because um, there is much space in Pluto, this is an method for folding space-time. Hmm. Usually people who fold space-time do it because they have too much space and they want to get closer, not the opposite. Um, this maze is shaped like a donut. Okay. Portals can teleport you from one side to the other. Cell walls, passages are point. Start is an open tile next to AA. All right. Uh, then sit on that one. Uh, no portals. You can start at AA, go down one, right eight. Okay, yeah. So that's the path that requires nothing. Uh, left forward on one. Whenever there's a shorter path, you could walk from AA to the inner BC portal. Four step. That's okay. Starting from here. One, two, three, four. Fifth step is into BC, I guess. Yep. Walk to the inner DE. So that would be from here. One, two, three. No. Oh, I led here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then warp for one step, which brings me here, which should be. One, two, three, four step. And then when I warp to that one, that's one step that brings me here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then I'm done. Only 23 steps. Here's a larger example. Fine. Screw you as well. So that one is. JP. Okay. And JP is zero. There are multiple exits as well. No, maybe there are not exists. Uh, it starts at AA. Oh, yeah. It always ends as here. As he said, I guess. Yep. And 58 steps. How many steps does it take to get to Open Tom Hart? AA and the Open Tom. So let's get my bus. Oh, that's a that's a solid one. Dang. Okay. Um. So the way I think about this one is, um, shortest paths like that are always most appropriate for uh, breadth first search. The same kind of thing that um we ran um, yesterday for day 19 
uh, with one little transform. So once on my solution, uh, 4D19, it suggested that instead of using a queue, I use uh, a set uh, structure. And uh, not any one of them, but the GB sets structure. And can I get to any specific thing? It's the GB set structure. And uh, the reason why GB sets is nice is because it's a simple set, but it's using a balanced binary tree for its implementation. And the reason for why that is nice is that if the start of the key is the number of steps so far, your breadth first search uh, using it as a queue would always start with the shortest path. So we won't have to do the thing where we expand um, indefinitely. We always are on the shortest path. And um, that makes it go faster. However, we're going to parse things a bit differently for that one because I will still make a big map with all the stuff in it. Um, the thing is that parsing the labels is not going to be, uh, let's start with the smallest one, it's not going to be that straightforward because I need to be able to jump randomly and know about uh, where the labels are. So one thing I might actually do is I'll make a map with all the points in there that tie them together. And then I think I should have um, a second pass. And that second pass is going to just be creating the warp points from the, labor I, the labels I have. To do that, um, I'm going to parse them not Now I could just maintain a second map while I do them line by line. Yeah, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a two pass on it uh, that way. So I will definitely start that one with the examples uh, because it's going to be more manageable than anything else. So. And I'm not going to go through tests uh, for this one, mostly because that's a bit more uh, uh, time consuming. Oh, God damn it. Auto indentation does not work super well in these things, so I have to get into paste mode. All right. what I'm going to do is trade on the first column like that. Who cares? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, so D. Here we go. Why is it choking? That's great. Then syntax alighting does not like this. Um, why is it struggling so hard? <laughs> this stuff. Here you go. Just needs to kick the tires a little bit. So um, I'm going to make a two map of the input. That's going to be the first pass and then um, assign portals is going to be what I will do with that map. So two map is going to be an extremely straightforward string parsing method that will just uh, and an empty map. for now will just be passed through so I will be able to test uh, my map parsing. I'll actually start at zero zero same as usual for these 
So when I'm done, don't care for the coordinate. I have the map, and I return this. This is the base case. To map, there I have all the things. If it's a wall, then to map T. So Y and the map. If it's um, actually, the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to probably have kind of a empty clause for all of them. That's going to be the last one for all the characters I don't understand. Um, I am going to care for uh, the line breaks. And when I do get the line breaks, I'm going to just do this, reset to zero, y plus one, and the map. Okay, so now I can care for the walls and for uh, for the spaces and the letters. Those are the only ones I want to track. So, empty spaces. In the map are going to be stored as the map x plus one y and this is going to be an open space uh, to map of a character oops X plus one, and map when the character is in that range between alphabetical characters and uppercase. And for these, I'm going to have the same thing, but I'm just going to store the character itself. And that should give me my first pass at the map. Why is it complaining? Yep. Okay, that seems to work. And A would be at. So. Here we go. That's not sorted at all. That's weird. Oh, okay. I was way too high. I should be getting on. Oh, I'm sorting them by, uh, <laughs> okay, by the X coordinate. Uh, I wanted to probably key sort them uh, by. Oh, yeah, that's going to be annoying because they're inside there. All right, I think it works anyway. Uh, because I should have had that. Yeah, see, that's the one I wanted. I get my AA properly placed. So assigning the portals is going to be a bit trickier. I'm going to have to start at uh, I'm going to have to go through the map. I think I could do it in a single pass. I'll do it in a single. That's going to be tricky, but probably no. Nah. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to um, I think I 
this is what I want. So the thing I want to do is go over all the values in the map. And whenever I see a character like that, I look for the other one. Um, and when I find the other one that's right next to it, that gives me a portal label that I can track on the side. And then I will take all the pairs of portal labels with the nearest point to one of them. And uh, that's going to cover it. And they're always parsed from top to bottom or from left to right. So I can use that as well instead. Um, okay, so I'm going to have to use a list for this because I'm going to do a list fold probably on each one of them. So uh, and so for each of here I'm going to get uh, a position and a character and I want only the characters that are in that same range I had and for each of these this is what I want to do and this is going to be my portals once I have that, um, I will insert the portals and I will sort them first so I don't have to insert them multiple times. So find label, I'm going to need to pass them the map too. All right. position, a character, and the map. So kind of easy way to do it. Uh, okay. going to be an ugly trick. Oh no, I can't do it that way. Okay. For a simple reason um, that I want to know if I was going up or down because that tells me which position the portal should be assigned at. Um, so I'm going to do something extremely simple for this. I'm going to need these functions anyway when I'm uh, inevitably waltzing down the map anyway. Uh, I need to know about the direction here. All right, uh, so it's going to be x minus one. Same logic I have every time. Oh, there are going to be a full stop though. way plus one that way and off we go and so oh, of course uh, and that would be uh, the value for the current one which I know is defined so 
here's how this can look interesting. So if the value is equal to what I have for up, then I know that my portal for, um, oh, I already have that one, it's C. Then I know that I have a portal at CC. Wait, they're not always, they sometimes have different labels and they have the order. Okay, so if up isn't false, then I know that I'm going to get up and C because a character is above. And the position I want for this one is that the portal is going to be on the step I'm on here right now that's the thing uh, if it's down that isn't false then I will have C and down and the position will be the down position here and that's going to be the logic for all of this So if left isn't false, then I know that left comes before C. And position is the current one. And finally, if right isn't false, then it's C. Right. And the right position. And that's going to create me a bunch of dupes. But this is why lists U sort is in here. Um, yeah, so inserting the portals, normal recursive function. When I'm done, I have a map, I return the map. that way and what I'm going to do is here's the problem I want to be able to skip from one portal to the next rather easily and um, I cannot use sort for this uh, yeah I can use sort on the entire value but some of them are going to have different values because what I'm going to have is a list that contains stuff like um, a, B, and then I will have 0 0.01 or something, and then I will have the point A, B, which will contain the, uh, I don't know, some other chord in it, and I need to tie them together. So, whenever I get um, label and a chord in it, in this list and my map, the thing I would want to do is that now I have, uh, actually both of them should be one right next to each other because they're sorted uniquely, except if my label is the A, A, N, Z one. So So here, what I should have is probably at coordinate contains start. I'll also do the opposite where it's going to be easier to do it that way. That way I can scan the map without any problem. And I'm going to do the same thing for uh, this label. So finish. Now for all of these, I can have the first coordinate and label P2 for the second 
coordinate because I have sorted my inputs. I know I will always get them. And the thing I can do that's interesting is that P1 now can link to P2 and P2 can link to P1 and I have all my labels for this. Oh, I need to keep recursing on all of these. should cover my entire map and portal thing and so when I hit a tuple instead of an open space then I will know that I'm in there and because of my start positions I don't need to overwrite like the first or second character it should still be fine so let's see what we get uh, example for this one uh, explosion oh I got caught. <laughs> okay. Good one. There we go. Okay, so my finish is at 13, 18. That should probably make sense. Open. Uh, my start point is at a position. That's all right. I should be having portals in this. Yeah, so 113 leads to 810. And probably that if I go to my 810 at another point, well, 98 with 18, that's going to be easier to check. So 18, that would be A to. No. One is on this side, and this is the A line to nine eight. They should be on the same height for both of these same X and Y coordinates. I don't have two portals on the same height, so I might have. Oh no, it's the same. Yeah, same Y coordinate at 8, and the left is 1. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, my position handling is not right. That should be this one right here. So that's the order of the label. Damn it. Okay, so here, this is correct as a logic for the label name, but the position is, okay. I'm going to have to rework this. Um, I have a feeling that this is going to be the hardest part, not the traversal, but really just getting the map well represented. Um, Okay, so I'm just going to have more branches in here. I'm going to keep that. So, if the up position is open, then I know that not only do I have that, Okay, then I need, then I know that if my up position is open, then that means that my position is the right one, uh, but that I'm in the order C, and then I want the down value for this one by elimination, right? Because of this. So if I'm here and this one is open, then I know that the label is below me. And it's, it's going to be that process of elimination I'm going to do instead. So if down is open, then it's going to be the opposite, right? If down is open, then I mean 
that. Uh, uh, up value is going to be a character. I'm going to be here, and the position is going to be mine as well. So I'm going to keep filling that. If the left is open, then I'm here, and the right is the end of the label, and my position is good. And if the right is open, and the left is my label and C is a thing and my position is still good uh, I'm going to output this as well because this is easier to check than the full map output. Yeah, that's the problem I had in here. No true branch, so something doesn't happen. So here, the thing that happened is I, I'm now in the case where so that means that neither up or down are open in that position and neither left or right are open which is the case where that blows And here, what I'm going to output is just one big tuple that's going to be uh, at the position I have C, up, down, left, right. And those are all my values, and I'm probably missing something easy. Okay, so I'm at my position. That's nine eight. None of them are open. Oh. Okay. And down is not false and up is not false, and right is not false, and left is not false, then I can do these. Uh, but on the other case here, for example, where, and the problem I have is that if up is another character, That's not, that's not decent logic. That only works when uh, so I'm going to make a little to be um, to make it a single small expression that's easier to parenthesize like this so it can be used in line. Ah, okay.
go right there is a right, and here it's going a character to the left as well. So this should still explode exactly the same way it was exploding. Boom, that's fine. The case I had is that. Yeah. So the case I have is that here. I am on a character, but up. When up is open, but down is not a character, then that means that down should usually be open. No, they're all false. Oh, it means the point is even further up. Yeah, so that means that um, up C, and that would be uh, because down is. Not a car. I think. Just it's not open. Okay. Then that no. I believe would be the thing, which is really, really kind of messy. Uh, which means I'm going to have the same logic here. Where am I? Okay. It's down, but up is an open. Yeah, I need to be consistent here. And that would be C down. And here it will be down twice. And therefore, oops, I copy this here. I'm going to move these all to the same order because they're more looking like each other than the initial clause. So when right is open but left isn't. Mm -hmm. whoa, 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 whoa. That's a C. wrong. I only need the position of that point, assuming it's right by elimination. Hopefully it works. So here it's going to be right right of the position. I believe. In. So if up is a character and down is an open then up C and the position is up. If down has a character, and then down has to be open. If left has a character and right is an open, then left has to have a thing. And if right has a character, it's just, yeah, I think that sh should work. Here we go. Oh, 
that's not good. Okay, so clearly, uh, <laughs> uh, my logic isn't correct in there because I've got multiple labels multiple times and they're going to swap with each other in the wrong way. Damn it. Okay. If up is open and the character is down. Oh. I don't need to go there twice. I want the position of the point above me to be the entry point of the thing. I'm not reading the value. And so those were losing me my deduplication in there. Here we go. A is only there once, and is only there once. And BC is one eight and nine seven now. So uh, so that would be one eight and two three four five six seven eight nine. I was on eight. That's on seven. Now they're good. So when I enter that point, I get the portal to the other point. That's one step. Okay. My parsing seems to work now. Time to. Uh, Just breath first search for the shortest path of that maze. So I have a map. Um, I am doing to do my breath first search from uh, the map itself, but I'm going to be using uh, my queue is going to be a GP sets. I think there's a from list function in that one. Yep, from list is in there, so I'm going to do things differently. And I'm going to start with a cost of zero, and my position is going to be at the So uh, actually, I'm going to extract the start point here. I'm starting at the start point, and I am going to carry a list of all the visited path still, so that I don't check them more than once, which means that I'm going to have to carry is Q and the scene set, which is going to be just a start point, which I've seen once. That's good enough. And I think I'm good to go with this. Um, oops. So I have my map, I have my Q, I have my scene elements. And the call for this one is to be sets. Let me find the listing is going to be the smallest function, which returns assumes a set is not empty. Uh, isn't there a smaller one that gives me it without complaining? It is empty. Oh yeah. Take smallest, I guess. Element in the new set. All right. That sounds good. Uh, Out of the queue. Uh, 
is going to give me uh, next position. And uh, a temporary queue here because I might get something else. And uh, all right. Actually, that's always what I'm going to get. Because what happens if the set is empty? Uh, the set is never going to be empty because the trick with this thing uh, the thing with this thing is that I can stop the moment I see my position for the first time so map if the value is finish oh wait here is not going to be the position it's also going to be the length of the path then it's going to be length plus one and I'm done if what I see is instead um, a position so that would be x y then the thing I can do for that one is going to be to jump is my only option so I'm going to give myself breadth first search of the map and my new queue is going to be to be GP sets and there that would be um, an insert call I guess yep it's going to be an insertion with the element first here it's going to be the len plus one to the XY position ah here I need to do something a bit different. I need to see if I have already seen that point. So if I have not seen it, then I can do my search on that point. Uh, in TMPQ and I will add position in the scene set. And clearly this line is now too long, so. Let's format it so that it sits pretty. I have seen it then I just want to search on the temporary queue that I have with the same scene value I have because that one has already been handled yeah I'm here the thing that's important is I'm looking ahead on the next step before inserting it and I'm handling all my I assume that the Thailand one has never been seen before so then the only thing I have left is if I'm open then um, candidate is for my position in the map with the following scene elements and uh, out of the candidates I'm going to I'm going to do it the same way I had it yesterday so UQ is going to be this and now I can just spread for search of map 
uh, whoops, yeah, of map new queue and scene that has my current position as visited. And that should be the end of my search, frankly. So next position, map scene queue. I don't think I can insert many in the other sets, so... Uh, so here, what I'm going to... Oh. Um, I'm going to need to have on this one the... Um, the length as well. Because each of these, I'm going to enqueue them with a value of length of plus one. So all my candidates should now be and plus one of the position of, uh, just going to call it P, where P is in candidates of pos map scene. And what I will do is folding in a list. So each element is going to be entry that I want to put in the queue, and it's going to be GB sets insert of the entry in the queue. And my accumulator is going to be queue, and I am going to do it over this list right here. And so for each of them, it's going to be called and returned. I think this should work. Candidates is not defined, of course. Candidates is going to be a list, so I'm going to be using the position in uh, x plus one y x minus one y uh, I'm just enumerating all possibilities then I'm going to add a filter in here where um, is not equal to undefined. I don't think that I will ever get any of the map in there because the walls are not part of the map. And I will also go with... Ah, oh, yeah, that's why I was doing this before. That simplifies a bit of scanning. When I do this scene map for this, because then I can do... I can assume they are false and that the answer is not false and that works. So where's my next problem now? Scene isn't bound. Oh, that's right, it doesn't exist yet. Okay. No function close matching lists, you sort in line 1059. Oh, of course, I haven't passed it a list. Okay, that's far less problematic as a bug that I thought it could be. Now clause matching start. Of course, that's my first point. Um, and I start with a length of zero. So, ah, uh, yeah, uh, that should be good. Start is Yeah. 
let's just see if that fixes it. It's not chilly. I have to keep it here. Start is going to be that way. Hope it is going to be that way, and I'll make a special case for a warp that goes last. Here I only want to have uh, either open or else. Okay. So I'm going to get uh, the value of this is going to be maps get p map undefined, and I want v to be equal to open or else v to be equal to. Uh, to be a warp point, but I don't want to be exploring ASCII code. But, okay, now that one is going to be interesting because it appears that I'm getting an empty queue which shouldn't technically happen. So, uh, A20, BFS, all of them, a thousand of them, scope, local. I will get big ass maps, but I'm hoping it dies earlier. my Q in there because that's where it supposedly dies I guess that's biggest map oh no those are the scene point oh I know just realized um where's my candidates value so here <laughs> The thing I want here is I'm going to use something else. It's, I'm just going to be use uh, of that type of zero something. The thing is that I was not taking the finish point as a valid candidate. So here uh, I'm putting zero, but it could have been like uh, invalid or something as a string. It doesn't matter. I'm just putting zero as a cheat value here. Uh, now I have 29 and maybe I need to tweak the value I'm not quite sure what they had in there a total of 26 steps so I've got three extra steps on this one um, which I'm going I'm going to believe have to do with um, counting the finish point in here and possibly increasing them on this value, which I'm already paying earlier on, 28. Hmm. Okay. That's drastically more interesting now. I'm not adding a cost for this one. I'm adding a cost for these. Trace it. I'm thinking, but let's trace it. 
actually an example. Okay, so lots of content in here. Um, can I start at the beginning? Yeah, here. Okay. So, uh, my queue being in the middle is really <laughs> annoying. I'm hiding all the maps now. I'm calling this. Oops. And okay. And the tree representation is not the easiest one to use, but length of zero should be the start point of the first one. Then I get one nine two one nine three. exploring all of them. I should be able to see a jump happen at some point in there, but let's first look into um, all the candidates that I, I am exporting here. Um, these are two, is an atom or a tuple. is not seen already. So I'm going to this is going to be easier to debug that way. candidates I may be counting the plus ones of the portals anyway but we'll see there's a way around that so I should have a portal here 932 no 103 that's one it's just four nine Nine three and nine four. Ten three two one and three, that's fine. Where do I have a branching here? That should be nine three, that's a branch. Okay. And then the thing I'm going to get is at some point. some point I should have oh wait a second yeah these points are going to be shared if I explored one before the other but they shouldn't have been seen at this point yet I'm going to add a little bit of I'm just going to give it a space and that's going to extract me the candidate. So that's going to be at position with a given length. Some of them are dead ends. Okay. Uh -huh. 13, 14, and 13, 16. I'm betting that those are 14 and 16. So I possibly have too much length on my portals. Okay, so I'm going to take my candidates output here. I'm going to confirm a little thing in here. Um, I'm going to just get the, the type I have and make sure that I do get a portal from time to time. 
So at least that's right. Yeah, so I do get the portals. Oh no. <laughs> I think I get it. A portal that I do uh, when I exit the portal. When I'm exiting the portal, I'm just re-entering it again and never getting back. So if I'm getting this, it means that the next value is a portal. And instead of doing the maps get, I'm doing right here that just jumps. I need to, if I've seen the other value, I've been in there. And what I need to do is get my candidates and not just stop. And the candidates are going to be obtained from the value of my current position because I'm exiting the thing. I think that might work. All right, in my 54. Uh. <laughs> Why is it complaining that a key exists? Oh, am I enqueuing the same thing twice? that this is not proper logic so how do I do my freaking warp time on that one so okay I should never get this warp value this I just decided Instead, what I'm going to do is get it in the candidates in here. So if uh, this is fine here, I'm going to be doing warp on these. So, if any candidate is uh, when I'm done, I'm done. So what I'm going to try here is to um, when I have a candidate that is um, another warp point, so x, y, like this. The thing I will want to do with these is um, replace them by the candidates. At the position. X, Y. With ah, oh, God damn. So I will need to also carry the map and the scene elements for this. Until I'm done with that. Which hopefully won't get me into a kind of infinite loop. See if that works. The 
this one is valid. I don't care for it. So that just, what have I messed up? Here. Hopefully, that kind of works. Yeah, of course. That's fair. 25. Okay. So, I will count my finish to be part of the step to walk, I guess. And now I get that was the expected value 26 steps. I'll keep this in place in case I need it again. I'll remove my IO formatting and I will try a new input, the bigger one. Um, I won't have the time to finish all of this this morning. I'm already close to overtime. Let's try the bigger maze. can't copy paste it all in one go. So that's after the BULF portal thingy. And I think that should be it. UPP. That one should be in 58 steps. So. Oh no. <sighs> it's in Foldel in twelve sixty three and nine ninety two. So what do I have at line 92? This is here. My open space is not queuing something that has already been seen, so I'm not tracking them all properly. I think technically I'm visiting this one, and so my candidates needs to return me a new scene map as well, which is not fun. Here, I only see the position I'm in right now, but I don't want to keep digging in the queue forever. Because I should. going to do that one fine. It's interesting. What else do I have that's broken? I'm going to think about it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to change my strategy of marking things as seen here. And I'm going to instead get on these. And the point I'm in will have been visited already. Also means that here I could probably, you know, just do this. The implementation is not that big because, oops, I'm still in. Um, could be any other one. Just skip him. I can store this stuff. So here, I'm going to have the GB sets. I'm going to have 
the scene set, so I'm going to break that function down a bit. I don't need it for the insertion. That one can remain the same. What I need though is this here. Like this. So here that's going to be with the candidates. And I am going to return this. And you've seen as a tuple. So now my candidates function though needs to be flipped around. Uh, if they have not been seen that is fine but my warp function will need to be different to return its accumulator. Actually, the warp function only has to, yeah, it returns a list of candidates as well. So, uh, candidates, map, scene, now we'll need to, candidates, map, scene, and a new list of candidates. And when I have seen this ack scene, that is going to be a tuple of lists. They don't need to be reversed because they all get inserted in a queue anyway. So here, when I do this, I need to call warp on T on map and here's the thing. Here I will have to be equal to that one, but scene. I have seen this point that I'm warping you through right now. And so then I can map because they're technically at the same cost. I think if this makes sense. Uh, the map is the scene, it's now going to be new scene, and my accumulator is containing nothing has changed here. But on these regular points with the accumulator, my candidate is now going to be the new candidates that way. I'm going to um, bad argument. God damn it. Oh, 121. Hmm. What's the bad argument? I would like to know. Because I do a P maps. Am I returning a thing that shouldn't be a position? What's the format of candidates? Candidates should have the same format. The P is there, the T is there.
the candidates are first the new scene is there what is going on ah oh, don't wait to do just a layer of indirection on that one because it's going to be annoying to trace it anyway. So it's going to be really easy to get the output for that one. So that's my key. That's all right. That's a valid map. Is it complaining of a bad argument on this? <laughs> what the hell? I'm pitching a tuple at a position in there. Unless the error is not about this one. It's about this one that I broke somehow, but I don't think so. Here I have a big ass map, and that's all right. And I have two poem. Okay. of them why not scope is local okay it's been called multiple times I guess I'm getting a bad argument. Less comprehension on my 121. Line 121. Oh. Scene. Is my scene map not giving me? That would mean that, you know, the bad argument would be on the not value. But I'm only putting in values that say true in here. Or false. Is there anything else I'm doing with them? Um, where's my little fetch cheat? At this point here in time. Ah. All right. Maybe I missed something when I was looking at it. Yeah, 19.1 gives me one here. There's a place where I put a value in the scene thing, and that's the one I get. So where do I do on my map assignments? That's fine. That's fine. Oh. I had forgotten that one. Let's go to fetch. Maps yeah, This one is gone, and now it should work. Bad key 19. Okay, where do I get 19 now? It's on my 85. Uh. 
Oh. What? Tracing candidates again it is. My candidate was only the position 1935. And so... That's not supposed to happen. Goddamn broken map printing. It returns points. Interesting. 1935, and I have already seen 32. That's a 32 value, so where did I inject that 32 value? I called candidates of... Oh. So where's my... I call candidates with a list that had a single item that was this point. Should warp on the position. Like that. no. Oh. Uh, oh. I think I get it. That's messed up. Mutual recursion in that one because here I'm returning the point in the value. That's good. The warp function is extracting them, but when I get the candidates that have been warped already. Uh, so here, my candidates for x, y is fine, but each of these candidates that I have here should be re-added with their value. So there's one way to do it, that's probably clean. This function. Hmm. Let's see if that's if my, my gut feeling is right first. For C and C's. the old input and see what we have because it's going to be easier to debug. Um, Twenty six again, and that was the right result. <laughs> oh god damn. That one is not gonna be fun to debug. a fan of this because I do get 62 consistently mm.
still getting a wrong thing with my scene tracking then. All right, well, I have to work. I'll think about it and come back. Okay, bits of an insight that I have found. Um, there is a shorter path, 23. I was operating on the wrong one the entire time around. Um, so I was looking for 26 step, it's 23. I reverse to this. Um, and one little thing I've done here, um, was I added a label to each of my warp points to know which I was going through. So I'm probably still doing a plus one on each of these warp points that I don't need to do. Um, and I'm not quite sure how to fix that plus one I'm doing on all the warp points. The thing I'm doing is B, C, D, E, F, G here. Should be the shortest path there, B, C. D, E, and F, G. So for each of these portals, I have a plus one for the number of portals I go in that are in the path, because here I check the uh, minimal path, and that should be 58 with four portals, and I'm getting 42, uh, 62. So, uh, the little problem I have is that the warp point and the insertion here does the length plus one on its own, on the next value. And I cannot control that based on whether it was a warp point or not. Um, so that is a tiny bit annoying. this one and reduce them without doing some plus one minus one cheats on the thing. So one option is to go back to handling my um, warp points here, which would be kind of annoying. So I'm going to try that and go back to that format. Okay, so the approach with the warp points um, and going back to that stuff did not work. But I got it working finally by uh, reusing the structure I had already. Uh, the big thing that I did is that um, instead of just carrying the length as I did at every step of the way like that and making it flat, I decided that the length should be enforced by the candidate functions because it has to do recursive search. So I've kept this function for the candidates exactly the same. The only difference is that I've added the length argument to each of these. And the biggest changes came from the warp function. And here's what the warp function does. It now tracks the length. It still returns the accumulator and what has been seen. Um, and it mostly works the same as it did for the regular cases with the distinction that it, it increments the length plus one um, that we used to see here. So that length plus one is now inside the warp function. And um, the thing that I made to make it work is that I still use the same candidates. Uh, but when I get them, I remove one to the step to stop counting the warping as if it were a step and undo it. And since warp now returns the final result, rather than putting it here in the accumulator where it used to be, I put them as already logged entries. And so when I run the example of the big one, I do get 58, which if I recall was uh, the proper answer, 23 for the short one, 58 for the big one. And so um, if I were to retry the short one, I guarantee you I get the right result. So uh, the thing I need to do then is to simply run it on my first part. The logic was mostly fine. It was just to shift the uh, shift the uh, length calculation to account for the warping. So my input for part one is going to be equal to the advent input of day 20. And day 20 P1, extremely rapid. 
rapidly. 453. Let's see what we get. 453. Oh no. It's not right. It's too low. Oh. God damn it. And it works with the examples. Right, because it was giving me 58 on the example, which is exactly what they want. And I was getting the right result as well on. this one which was 23 but it's not correct on my day one uh, Jesus okay I have frankly no idea how I'm going to uh, go look at my day 20 input because that stuff is extremely large and the only two test cases pass and I don't have the good answer for that one um, hey is here where's the exit on that one It's at the top here. And it's at the top here. Okay, I'm going to go work, then take a break during lunch or something and try to figure it out because there's no great value here. Okay, so um, I think I found an interesting thing. So what I've been doing is um, I went back to the first input and um, I decided to um, count exactly the steps and do things step by step in the maze in the exact same path. So to do that, I started by, uh, where's my thingy? Here. I output each of the steps I have and I made it a lot more explicit uh, what was happening when I was warping a given line in the position. And the thing that happens is there, in there, uh, oh yeah, other thing I did also, um, output all my labels to make it easy to see when I was warping. And the thing that I've spotted with these is um, I've got these li label points, so going from, uh, you know, BC97 should go to 18, but when I was doing that, I was doing 97 to 28. And I was probably, um, skipping a few steps. And the other thing I had done was removing uh, the weird plus ones I was having because I was fearing a few things. So here with the length I was having a plus one, I dropped it and I had um, shifted some of my things. But what I think happens in there is that I'm skipping one step too many when I'm going there and I was just compensating otherwise. So I will correct this by going, um, you know, this is just a warp point, so I should be able to just, and then the C will be P is true, it's true, the length will remain the same, and the change is that I will put, um, the length plus one, the same step I would have done here. I'm putting here, but I'm doing the skipping of the point into the accumulator. And so when I run this one, the thing I get now is, uh, damn, that's 28. That's not what I want. or I'm warping. So the step I took to get into the warp signal is the one I want here. So I'm at 25, which is still too large. Uh, but I think that there's something in there 
where I need to do a correction of the length, but not the plus one I had. Like, probably it's my counting of the um, first and last steps that is behaving a bit funny in this. So if I compile and run this example, this one is 61, but I was supposed to get ah, 58, so that's still an offset of three. That still doesn't work. I'm gonna try and find something else. Oh no, so I was looking at the numbers, and I think my problem is, like in the days I had a lot of trouble, not the right one. So you know, 9-1 should be this value here. Um, and I want to start on, oops, I want to start on the one below it. And for BC, I get 1, 8, and 9, 7, but this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And here it should be 2 on this one. So 2, 8, and 9, 6. So all <laughs> my coordinates are slightly off. And I think it's um, for these, or I pick my position, and that's the thing, right? Uh, if my own character was there, then it needs to be uh, down that one, and uh, wait, no, it needs to be up this one because I'm at. It's one or the others of these there. Oh. Yeah, up is open, so it's up. Down is open, so it's down. That's the thing. God damn. If that's the one thing I've been chasing for all this time, that's gonna suck. And rule at the same time, 26. Okay. Um, and my answer was supposed to be 23, so it's possible that this makes sense because, oops, oh, okay, the first point might be a bit of a problem here, but 1828, these are fine, and here I was getting, what, 26, and the answer is supposed to be 23. Okay, but I was working on the third step, 297, and that one I would have wanted to be different, but okay. Uh, okay, so what I think needs to happen here then is that this one is right, the duplication I get is because the kind of weird mistake I made at first is still fine. And here, essentially, if it's not there, I want the one that's at the other extreme, but I want the open position, not just the label itself. So that needs to double. And so if I recompile it now, I get 17. But my warping is, I think, what is extremely. Uh, so I started in 192, and here I should be at the fourth step when I enter BC. And that should be one, two, three, four in BC and five after it. So BC is nine six, and at nine six I'm at three, so I'm lagging one behind here. And at two eight I'm still at three, so I need to correct these downstream, which means that uh, I think this behavior here. Uh, of warping. Warping should take one length, maybe. And my getting in there. Where am I getting from? Okay. So here I have this. I could increment my length for all of these directly. I would no longer need to do it on this one on the loop. And here 
where I'm getting 23. And I think that's fine. And two, I get here at four and at two eight, I've stepped forward one step. That gives me a 23. So let's switch the example. On, I think I haven't shown this bit, but I've decided to stop toying with all the commenting that way. And 59, which was, oh no, I'm one off. God damn. Uh, so I'm going to just figure out until I get back on these two and then come back. Okay, so here what I've just done. I've printed all the freaking path on the big map one by one and I've counted the path by hand where you can see me tracking the digits here. And when I do it by hand, I land on the answer 59 there as well. The same as my program, but not what, uh, it's not what the thing tells me. So what I'm going to try is to run my part one on this. Oh, let me recompile it first. I'll drop all my output. And I'm going to run it and try this solution. And if it works, I'll figure out that the example had a problem. So that's 462. Now let's hope that we have the right thing, 462. That's the right answer. God damn it. One of the problems itself of the examples had the wrong result, or at least I counted it by hand twice and got the different thing. Great. All right, so part two is strangely the exit isn't open when you reach it. And then you remember the instant Plutonians were famous for building recursive spaces, which after having an example that doesn't work, I guess, sure. Uh, the mark connection in the maze are important or is it physically connect to larger or smaller copies of the maze? Okay, so I guess that explains why they have a small space and then they can fold space and time and then it makes sense for them. Specifically, the label tiles around the inside edge generally connect to a smaller copy of the same maze, and the smaller copy in their label tiles is yet a smaller copy, and so on. When you enter the maze, you are at the outermost level. When at the outermost level, only the outer labels A, A, N, Z function at the start and the end, respectively. All the other other label are effectively walls, okay? At any other level, A and Z count of walls, but the other row. Okay, so at the base level, on the other walls, only the entrance and exit work, but on the other levels, it's the opposite. Through the maze, that brings you back to the outermost level of the maze. Okay, in the first example above, the shortest path is now the loop around the right side. Okay, uh, the example of, let me, boom. Uh, and I have them in day 20. Read only, okay, here we go. Oop, that one needs to scroll now. In the first example above, the shortest path is now the loop around the right side. Yep, get that. Uh, if the starting level is zero, then taking the previously shortest path would pass through BC to level one, which I guess it would be here, but one level higher to DE, which will be to level Two, which is higher, and then the E would exit there and would be to FG, which is to level one. Okay, so the outer layer decreases the counter of levels, and um, level zero inside goes up. Okay, I think that kind of makes sense. In the second example above, there is no path. <laughs> <laughs> At least the broken example won't be coming back to haunt me. Oh, crap. 
Okay, here's a more interesting example. Screw you. Uh, shortest path through the maze is the following. Okay, A A to X F. A A is. Jeez. A A to X F, and then that gets up a left. Okay, I think I understand it. Um, of course, the thing is going to be to retransform our portals, which at least now are labeled uh, because of all the fighting I did with step one, and that turned out to be good. Um, I need to have a way to figure out if a portal is inner or outer. And... Uh, I'm guessing that, how am I going to do this? I'm going to leave the part one as it is. I'm going to destroy part two, example two. It is garbage that nobody should rely on. Boom, it's gone now. Two maze, two levels, I guess. Um, and I will need to Surely I don't want that to the part one. Uh, so input is still going to be the same, I guess. BFS to level. To me, geez. Input, all right. And I will be starting at level zero, I guess. Uh, BFS, a uh, different thing. I'll make different variations of it, I guess. So, how do I handle my levels? I'm going to go back to this form here. And uh, the thing I will probably need is to um, know, you know, the label starts at which position, like what's the top corner of each of them where there is a wall and I will know that the um, labels are outside of there or that they would be in the limits of something what did I do uh, da, da, da. oh yeah that one is up why is it complaining now there before the pin yeah screw you I don't care Two levels doesn't exist. Okay. Um, maybe I'll need the input, but we'll see. Now let's get here and two. That's just going to be a map. So all my labels are going to have So I know that those are have uh at least you know um y smaller than or equal to two and uh x smaller or equal to two are going to be outer. Uh then I need to do the other outer edge. Um which I guess I will need the input for, only to get the size of a line. So where's my two levels? Input again, uh, I will need it for. I really dislike how uh, my Vim here seems to be dying with all of these things. So that's going to be all right. Uh, my input, I am going here to go ahead and um, there is going to be a function in the lists to, I think it's called lists Let's search C 
and c is equal to the line break, I guess. And what is that giving me? Two, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five, backslash n, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Value 10. Okay, so it just tells me that it found it in the map, so that's not the one I wanted. Um, what was the one? Not take. Well, yeah, I could do uh, just a take while and c is not equal to n. Then it will give me the length of the thing I want, and that's going to be my line length. So, uh, take while. C is not equal to a line break. And on the input and length of that minus two, this is my um, that only works for uh, this. So I will probably, you know, the thing I want to do is going to be uh, just the standard string like seams of this and using the line break in here and that's going to give me also the number of rows and each one of them will have the same length. Uh, all right, so input line break. This gives me a grid and um, Um, order up is going to be to, how am I going to compare these uh, for each character? So, uh, okay, so my upper left is uh, for the x size, it is uh, two on the left, and then it's going to be length of the head of the grid minus two for the right. And for the y axis, it's also going to be two, and then it's going to be the length of the grid minus two. Well, that's supposed to be a two here. That will give me my uh, boundaries. Okay, so what I can do is that I have the map. Um, I'm going to fold. I'm going to still use a list of all the labels. So my labels are labeled uh, on the coordinate. So it's going to be the coordinate and then is going to be it's labeled to a given point and what I'm going to do here is uh, that's going to break part one that's uh, all right and the level of P is going to be stored here for each of them So that's going to be, that's the thing I want. So, uh, X, X. Um, and what I'm saying, max Y is Length of the grid minus two, I think. Two level p min x max x min y max y, and that will be for maps. Two. Uh, 
to list of the map and I want only those that have the format P level 2 in there. So I'm going to skip all the regular points. Um, maps from list of this is going to be I'm going to do that after the fact right now. I just want to make sure that all my grids and my points are right. Um, level of the point, so x, y, max. And this is going to be only like x is smaller than equal to x min. I think so. Let me, I had output in here. And here I had 6, 10, 11, 12, 2, oh, okay. Yeah, 2, that, sh that should be all right. I will have um, a potential problem if, nope, okay. There's always an outer wall, so that will be safe. So if x is smaller than the minimum or y is smaller than equal to the minimum, or else x is greater than or equal to x max, or else y is greater than or equal to y max. Uh, if that's true, then that's level zero. Is that false? That's level one. Uh, I don't have my exceptions for A and A, but we'll see what that gives me for now. L5, but it's called here. Here, all right. Of course. I'm very tired with this problem already. But, but uh, so uh, is tuple two. Okay, that's nice. So my A A B B and Z are not in there because they're labeled start and finish, and I've got. 2 and 13, nope, 6 and 10 shouldn't, yeah, 11, 12, 2, 13, oh, that's uh, problem 1, right, there should be 3 that go indoors, So BC in two eight. That clearly should be an outer one. What the hell? Did I? Or else, or else, or else. Yeah, okay. Is it uh I don't think that has to do with this. Yeah, that's it. Three or else false would have exploded. That's what I thought. Um, was the outermost that they called. I'm just going to use numbers because it's going to be way easier to add stuff anyway. Uh, am I passing the wrong point? No, I'm taking the external point that I have here. 
at that point it should be x and y. And I can't understand why. Okay, 2 and 8, that's smaller, that's true. It's 6 and 10, that's all right. 9 and 6. Oh, that's the y axis, that's a problem. No. Y is smaller than the minimum, is that what I had? Yes. I don't, okay. Crap. I'm clearly not in a functional state anymore. Just because, uh, like I should clearly, and I mean clearly here, I have none that are greater on this side. That should be 19. In here, uh, yeah. I'm just blinking looking at my screen, and frankly, uh, I'm not feeling like doing these anymore. I've got more interesting things to do than this. I'm going to take pause and a break and do it at a later point. I don't give a crap anymore. Uh, all right, the thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to not this, just tracing the freaking output. That doesn't work. Uh, Neville. Uh, not having fun anymore. Not going to be called that many times. So seventeen is and eight. Oops. So I'm guessing I probably half half by zero errors because one two that's from nineteen to 937, so that should, yeah. And what's the other one it gave me? Eight. It gave me eight. That, that one was 17, so like it's easy to see that if I do 17 down. I'm at that point, and so it's looking for something. That's zero. Oh, zero, 17, so that should be 16 as well so it should be the length minus three for this but the length of the top of the grid on that one here so i should reasonably be from zero to that's number one up until two past oh i get it this one sucks um, only because <laughs> I get it. I assume that there would be a label like this and it's not always there. Uh, okay. So there's always one on the top or the bottom. Uh, and where is my thing? Okay, how do I work around that? I would probably need to gather until the last non white space if I trim the trailing characters of the first line because the first line never has them anyway. Okay, the first line never has them anyway, so I just need to remove the drop of two. Uh, where's my thing? First line never has them anyway. The length of the lines would mean that that would give me here. I would have this value of 19 long. I'll see if I get the uh, of by one error. 
I won't see it with that example, but okay, at least BC, that's not it, that's not it. Example, so now it's 10 and 16. Why is it 10 though? Because I clearly have more than 10 values on this, on the length of the first one. Oh, <laughs> the first one is the one with the A, so I need to have the third line for that thing. God damn it. Uh, where's my thing here? Third line of the grid is going to work. Because there's always one at the top. And here we go, half of them. DE1, DE0, FG1, FG0, BC0, and BC1. So now they're labeled. Um, what I need to do then is I can just do a map insertion of all of them. So, uh, fold of the, all these elements. Uh, that's going to be the key and the value and the map then I am going to put in the map the key and the value and that's it and I will fold starting with the map as the accumulator and my list is going to be this charming old thing here and now uh, and I run the example then I do get the level for each of them If I go for all of these, oops, for all of these, then the finish will be covered. And okay, so now I can start hooking that one up into BFSL, which is just going to care about levels and I'm starting uh, where's my okay I hate one when the thing gets confused okay so this one here was simple let's copy paste that into BFSL L, L, L. Uh, I'm going to start from, where am I going to store the level? I will have to store the level on this thing where I have the length of the path and I'm going to store the level there as well. I think. I don't know if it's a sanest way to do it the state needs to be carried around in there start will be start on the level zero is true because the other ones might not be okay uh, which is going to be interesting because it's possible I hit a start point on another level and I'll need to treat it as a wall but we'll see what that gives me so that would be the length, the level, and the position here. I take the smallest one, I get position of that one. When, um, that's fine. That's going to be filtered out at another step somewhere else. Um, here. I will need to carry, oops, next L carries the level, uh, the length will come before the level. New Q, new scene, that's going to be fine. And then I can recurse there. Mm. Okay, here's what I can do for that, that's going to be even No, I'm 
going to keep it that way. Let's do it simple. And it's already 2 hours 16 freaking minutes. So I'm going to copy all the crap I want. Uh, I have to do the warp as well. Who cares? Okay. I'm going to start by taking that and putting it at a different space. So at least the, implement the implementations are not mixed. Uh, maze build. Don't care. Leveled BFS. And here. I can carry all of these. Put them here. Uh, here it's going to be the next L. It has to carry a level around. Candidate bus map C land. Level and it's going to be candidates with an L. Entry is fine, new candidates, new scene, that doesn't change. Candidates with a level. I am level. I'm going to just change all the calling notations on that one. Before I actually address the stuff. And here should be warp with a given level. Warp with a given level that. Uh, don't care for the level here. I will care here. I will care here. That's going to be warp L as well. This is gone. Warp L, warp L. And I care for the level after the length. Okay. So, does that explode? Yep. Forgot to rename a few already. Let's start that way before getting further out. Okay, now it works. Well, it works. It no longer complains loudly. So, I have the level, I have the thing. And, um,. Here is where I'm going to do a thing. Level remains the same in that case. Uh, when I see a label, now it's no longer going to just be this. I now have um, level change. And I believe I... Uh, okay, yeah, that's a good thing to do. So when I do my levels, I'm going to use minus one if it's an outer and plus one if it's one there. Um, here I have my level change value. This is a very noisy function now. Uh, not the biggest fan of it at this point. Uh, and I'm going to actually have to care here. If it's a tuple, I have to... Uh, care for this but if is tuple v and also um, element 3 uh, if it is it, uh, let me split my screen because now it's getting tricky to understand I'm trying to just patch it up the level is the third element so and also element 3 of v is I can put these in a parenthesis. And also, if the third element of it is minus one. Okay, so I need to do my little thing here. So if level is zero, no, if level is greater than zero and also element is minus one so that means that I'm going to an outer wall while I'm above which means that this is allowed okay uh, and here to have to nest my conditions, I think. Or else uh, the level is zero. 
Yeah, if I'm a if I'm above zero, all levels are good, right? I think so. I'm asking the question out loud, but yeah. So let me read that freaking thing. Yeah, if I look at it, insides let me go to higher levels, outside only to lower levels. So if the level is greater than zero, then it's always good. Or else, if the element is the outer wall, now if the element is one, uh, and also, I can always go inside. Okay, or else the level is exactly zero, and that's the case. If the if it's exactly zero, then I need the element three to be equal to one. And I think that should probably work. And I have not seen the thing. Or else is tuple and also blah 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 close that one and I have not seen the elements but the P is also is that uh, I'm already forgetting what I had so much freaking state to carry around for this I'm carrying them as the position where where here yeah the level follows okay uh, I haven't seen that one okay sure why not now that one should work uh, the next problem is level change is not being used. So assuming it is valid, um, the link level plus level change is enacted here and otherwise it remains the same. Yeah, key exists. So my filtering of scene elements is no, oh yeah, here, it's P. I've seen it at this level, but I'm changing the level later. I think that should work. Uh, 26. Is that what I'm supposed to get? Because this is the other wall, the only option is to go back to BC, which is deeper. In the same example, there is no path that brings you to Z. No, in the second. Okay, the first the show is now the loop. So I need to count the freaking loop by hand. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. So it seems to be all right. Now let's get their freaking larger example, which will end on the line bef below IC. You know what? Let's be cowboys. I'm tired. I'm not trying it on the example. I'm trying. I'm going to try it in the example if it fails on this one. So this is now BFSL and P2. Oops. I'm going to have a bug. <sighs> okay. Let's do the example. God damn it. I'm. <sighs> Having absolutely no fun doing this right now. I'm not enjoying myself. 
this fucking garbage again. Uh, pace mode. Uh, oh, the wind ending bullshit. Now it's still complaining about all the syntax highlighting that blew up. CK and IC is. Uh, I'm going to need three paste. I'm on the line below CK and IC. And then it's the fourth line below this thing. So I was here. I think this should be this one. Hopefully I copy paste it right. Four lines below the P. Four lines below the P. Oh, that's five lines. Okay. It's easy to see which one is doubled. And here. Take the smallest. Uh, it's going to be so annoying to trace into this freaking maze because they have limited examples that give or carry no meaning whatsoever. And I'm just tired of this freaking problem. Um, no, I'm, okay. Format, it's going to be just a freaking thing at each step. No, that's not even the right function. God damn it. BFSL. That's cool. I'm never finding any way of going down. This is because finish is always valid, but I haven't even put the constraint there. Let's see, we'll see. Um, so, day 20. Where is my AA? Of course, it is not a one line, so it's going to be at the bottom. AA and then I shouldn't find anything to the other layers. Where's the inner? Oh man, that's going to be extremely long to go and figure out. I'm digging the smallest one. That's fine. Oh, uh. Yeah, I should just be sorting in by length. The level is going to be the closest one to the ground. And I'm doing this one with um, IO format because there are a crap load of calls. I want them to be structured. The map is huge. Like, it's not made to be very friendly. Each of them should have their levels inside. So 15, 30, there's only one option there. I fork to 30 and 30 and 30 and 31. And I'm ending up at 16 steps in 1728. So if I want to see that one, that's going to be 28 down and 17 to the right. And I'm getting stuck to this one, which is kind of a good sign. I would have, at least I found one of the forks there. I'm just not getting down to that level. So. That means it's my, I'm going to murder that freaking syntax highlighter. So my level is zero and the element for that one should be this. And uh, 
that should be the candidate that I find at that level. So it's a tuple. And the level that I'm currently on should be zero. So I get into this clause. Also, the third element of the value. Oh, and uh, the third element of the value here should be the level change is equal to one because I'm incrementing a level rather than going down. And what I'm finding is probably that, let me output my freaking labels. That means that's what I need to do. Is equal to this here. Let me just do this. Oops. On the new labels, and I will. And hope that my output still shows the right thing. New labels, and my coordinate that I was breaking at was 1728. So 1728. That's fine. I should be at that one. Oh, but it was a valid candidate. Okay. So 1728 was valid. I was in there, then I wanted to get its neighbors, and because it was valid, I know that that's the 1728. I should have read this. It got validated, and then the problem is probably in my um, warp function here or there. That I don't know. I should have put the length plus one, the level plus the level change. And X, oh, it's not the X, Y value here that I'm, yeah, that should be it. I've seen P, I've seen X, Y. So warping S from P to P. And here I'm going to have a label as the string. I'm going from P level to x, y on level plus level change. Yeah, that's good, that's good. I got three, oh, the first label, not needed. Level isn't bad. What? Oh, typo. <laughs> so I'm never seeing it as a warp point, am I? How am I doing this again? It's a label. Label two is a chord. Oh. Here's a problem. All right. Which is eighty six. Now it completes. I don't know if that's the value they're looking for. Three hundred and ninety six. Okay, so I need to um this is where I need to uh, put restrictions on the atom that I have here. Because right now I'm accepting any atom, which is probably, um, and also, you know, uh, V is finish. I think it's just finish, not finished. And also the level. I can only finish on level zero, I think. 
Yep. So I should only get the finish value out of the map and consider it valid if yeah I'm only supposed to exit at which layer outermost layer which is zero that should be this what other atom atoms can I have Hmm. Oh, I think that might be my big in one or something. So now I'm dying on this, and why is this? Where am I? I need to see my map again. Probably don't have it anymore. I'm pretty sure that I'm not generating an atom for any of the coordinates that I have for a regular grid. Oh, it's open. Oh, God, yes, of course. Okay. V is not open. Or else the level of zero. So, uh, V is open. Or else the level of zero. So, if V is not open, level zero is acceptable for the finishing of things. Now, where's that one parenthesis going? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to close that one. I forgot all the open values. Here we go. Uh, this is going to be long. I'm going to kill some IO format. And compile and run it. And that's longer than I would have liked, but is it eventually going to finish? That's the question. Uh, that's way too long to be legit. I'm going to retry it again on the first input and see if I still get 26 with the new rules. Because, oh yeah, I was getting at 800 as a value and that's 396 already. 26 still works there. So... Yeah, to, oh, 255 depth levels. That's way high, 260. I'm... Is my level change not... Oh, I'm so freaking tired of this syntax highlighter. All right, uh, I'll go think about what I could be doing wrong about my levels and come back. Okay, quick update when I'm debugging all of that stuff. Uh, I was checking my uh, warping functions and I noticed this little issue where I was uh, caching only the warping point on the same level I was rather than the changing that I was about to do. So I've updated that. Uh, it's still not the right result, but at least now it's finishing. Um, it's just too short. So I'm probably skipping at a place I shouldn't and uh, that's the thing I'm going to do. Like it's weird that I'm wrapping from the same one to the same one a few times in there. Uh, I'm going to look into that. Okay, so I was going through all the steps one by one and uh, the problem I'm seeing is just, oops, uh, I lost it, great. Um, there was a step here where uh, WB, XB to WB here, where I went from uh, here, uh, yep, I went, please stop this, okay, anyway, I went from that step here, where I was at level 9, 
and 137 uh, steps. And um, I came down here through the point uh, XQ, uh, what, where, where was I? WB2XQ. Wait a second, okay. I was at XQ here at 131. Then from XQ I go to WB, which is a four step thing. So here I should go there in a four step thing, so 136. And I've got two wraps here at the same time in WB. One that is at level two and one that is at uh, from two to one and from 10 to nine uh, on the same duration. And I don't know why I get this one, uh, but it's clearly wrong. And um, like I want to use this, but this one is probably going to come up first or something. So there's a weird thing when I'm going down a level to this and I don't know why I get a triple warp to WB here um, but that was really really weird and I think that skipping these levels or something caused me a few issues uh, I'll double check that because I hadn't seen my triple WB here but this is what it looks like yeah I'm pretty sure this is the only reason it can be wrong uh, on this like there is nowhere for this WB entry to come from uh, at 136 steps because there is only one big thread that goes up so I do uh, weird double and queuing when going inside of uh, one of the portals which is weird because I should do uh, plus the level change and I should have only one of them when I'm doing my warp um, so one of the things I'm going to do is, where's my BFSL? I'm going to add here my um, uh, screw this for matter, uh, a given node, and, and I'm going to just have the uh, position, level, and length in there, and I want to see what seems to trigger this. Because it is really, really, really odd. So here and there at some place I should have a warping WB. Okay. Yeah. So, 19... Three on the level two is very intriguing from that point of view. Uh, the level is the one I'm supposed to have. I'm checking it that way, and the way I'm supposed to put it in there is the level, the point, and the length first. So how do I go from, I'm going to track the candidates as well, just because, no, the candidates would come first here. Um, that would be an enqueuing thing. Okay, yeah, I'm going to output the candidates that I would get otherwise, which I warp and I put here. And frankly, at this point, this is all I've been doing, trying to understand these. Where's my big warping for WB? Warping CJ, RF, FD, RE, where are these? Okay, I'm still lower. And HRE, I see. XQ. WB, WB. All right. So where is that 19.3 coming from on layer two? 
Because there is... So, 19-3 here. Okay. I've got 19-3 on layer 2 and 19-3 on layer 10. What's the map looking by? Of course, they could all be connected from the same thing, but... With 135 steps, so that's right. It's coming from here. Okay, it's not even an invalid one. It's just part of the path that I've been trying. So more search for me. Okay, I think I got it. It's crappy. It was a bug with the labels. Um, while playing with it, I've cleaned up my valid checker to uh, be more explicit about things. So now it's very, very simple to follow along. And then, uh, since all the logic seemed to make sense, I had my warp, my IO, my, my, all my stuff level was being checked. Um, I noticed that there was the possibility that, you know, off by one errors could clear um, a path in one of the examples or something. And um, a bunch of exits, I think, I noticed were not being taken very often. Uh, and since some levels were getting lower than I thought they should be, uh, then I decided to check. Uh, the first grid for the max of Ys uh, made sense, but I, I noticed that I did not do any correcting for this one, uh, and I went with the length of the side of the map on the third row, which meant that it stopped at this value, but the length is usually one more than the coordinate that I have, so a bunch of side values were on the side. So I tried it the first time, and it worked extremely rapidly for that one, so now I'm going to try my uh, part two. Oh yeah, that's a thing I, I put in there. Uh, it's <laughs> I'll remove that. Um, at some point I was uh, refactoring things with the little function, and I got into deep loops and I didn't want to get too much output. I wanted to explore the beginning of the map, so I put a hard-coded crash when I tried to get too deep. And I'm hoping that this is the right result. Because if it isn't, I'm quitting uh, today's problem. Oh, no. It's too low. All right. Well, I don't know what I can do about this. Uh, I had the right answer for the example as well. 396, that's a thing, right? 396 on the example. I don't know. I have no solution. I don't know what kind of digging I can do to help with that now. Uh, it's possible I get... Oh, here we go. Good thing I looked at my map and it shows me when I'm out of boundaries on these. For my own map, the limitations are not the same because I do have this little magic freaking output that can kiss my ass. Oh, what the hell? Okay. And that was telling me that my input was too low, right? So my calculation of the edge values was still wrong. Here, it's no longer minus one for this one. It should be. Uh, pray tell, Mr. Babbage, if I put the wrong inputs into the machine, will I get the right answers? Oh uh, no, uh, where's my minus one here? So now it should be minus three, I guess, for that one, because I've got two more results. And if I do P2, 5288, let's try 5288. 5288, submit, and it finally worked. Almost three hours in, never again. Where's my example code? I'm flushing this one because the example code has been extremely bad to me today uh, in terms of all the things. So at least let's see uh, advent race 20, uh, 1.3 seconds. I am 
unsurprisingly not going to optimize this stuff. Uh, see you next time for day 21, which hopefully, god damn it, is not going to be as bad, including having what is apparently invalid examples, just to piss me off. Alright, have a good day.